first of all, let's give all our guests again a big shout out. Thank you. The good news, the new gospel. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for coming out and for having the awareness to understand the importance of this event. Uh, you know where Eureka is. A hundred miles off of Eureka is Fukushima's CC-134. Radioactive materials right here on the California coast damaging all of our fish, the salmon that we now eat every day, it's being polluted from the radioactive releases from Fukushima. You know it all happened on March 11, 2011. In the afternoon there was a major earthquake and following the earthquake there was a major tsunami. The lights are out, there's no water, Fukushima power plant, it's a huge power plant, six reactors, no power, no lights. They don't have batteries on the premises. The batteries they have are down in the, in the basement and they are flooded. So they have to order batteries from 10, 15 miles away. They load the batteries on, they bring the wrong kind of batteries. They try to bring the wrong batteries. They brought triple two, uh, triple A batteries, the kind you use in your little, <laughs> you know, cell phone or your recorder. But they need 12 volt batteries, so then they try to bring the 12 volt batteries up. But because of all the water from the tsunami coming in, they can't get the trucks close to Fukushima to use the 12 volt batteries to activate the auxiliary water supplies to try to jump load the water so they can cool the reactors. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the reactors are melting down. They then get the bright idea to have the workers go out into the rain, out into the storm, out into the radio releases, lift the hoods of their Hondas and their Nissans and all of their cars and take <laughs> out the 12 volt batteries. <laughs> out of their cars, come back into the dark with their flashlights and try to read the, the registration, these uh, diagrams, to figure out how to now activate the water system. Meanwhile, Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, is broadcasting to the world, everything's under control, we don't have any meltdown, we're in control, they're telling the Japanese government everything is under control. They're just broadcasting this mantra of lies. So, the ambassador to Japan calls the ambassador to the United States. Obama uh, dispatched the uh, Seventh Fleet, led by the USS Ronald Reagan. They were doing maneuvers off the coast of Korea. And they get the word, go to Japan. It's Operation Tamadachi. America and Japan have been treated. Tamadachi, the word Tamadachi is, and Japan is friend. This is literally Operation Help Our Friend. The young sailors, they are happy. They think they're going to Tokyo. They don't know what's going on. They think we're going to go party and they get the word. No, you're going to provide humanitarian release, relief. You're going to take water and blankets and food. You're going to have pull people out of the water. So the ship turns around and starts heading to Japan. But unbeknownst to them, five hours after the earthquake, reactors one starts to melt down. Reactor 2 starts to melt down. Reactor 3 starts to melt down. Reactor 4 is not activated because they had taken it down to make repairs. We put an asterisk there for a moment on Reactor 4. So they arrived the following day on uh, March 12th. They pulled the nuclear powered ship and it has devices on it, Geiger counters, to determine and detect radioactive releases on the ship. This is a huge, huge ship. They pulled it with about two miles of shore. We have the photographs. You can see the mountains, much like you can see Snow Mountain back here, of the shore of Japan. And they send over helicopters and people jump in the water and try to rescue people. They take over food. They have uh, water and blankets that they're taking over to shore. And the helicopters start coming back with these high counts of radiation. Mm -hmm. 
they begin to become suspicious. Suspicious. They then looked at their Geiger counters, and after they had changed several of the engines on the helicopter, just trying to get rid of the radioactivities, and they sealed these these engines because they were contaminated. They then moved the ship, started moving the ship away from shore. They send one guy up to take down the flag as, uh, as they're about to move the ship. And he went up, took the flag down, folded in this usual, you know, the kind of, uh, like the patron's hat they folded in. He put it in his arm, went down to the bottom of the ship, to the bilges, and when he got down to the bottom, his entire side had blistered up. Oh, he put the gag account on him and he was totally radioactive that oh literally God. stripped him naked in front of all the crew immediately, <coughs> men and women, scrubbed him down, wrapped his clothes into uh, plastic, and uh, they moved the ship. They went out 50 nautical miles off the shore and they were still taking on radiation. Even at 50 nautical miles, they, they were still taking on more radiation than is safe. So they moved the ship out 100 nautical miles. This is about 125 miles off the shore of Japan. And out at that distance, they measured the radiation according to Commander Mueller, the, one of the commanders on the USS Ronald Reagan. It was 30 times more radiation than normal. Meanwhile, on uh, two days after the release, Reactor 1 exploded. Two days later, Reactor 2 exploded, blew the top off, exposing all the nuclear fuel rods to the air and allowing the prevailing wind now that is going back out to the Pacific to take all this radioactivity right to where the American sailors are. They're <coughs> right literally marinating in this radiation in the prevailing wind off the coast of Japan. A couple of days later, Reactor 3 explodes, the top blows off. Now you remember I told you about the asteroids with Reactor 4? It was down, but they had a pipe from Reactor 3 over to Reactor 4 that leached the hydrogen gas and it blew up. These disasters were just to be just an accumulation of disasters that have started at Fukushima power plant from the time that it was built in the 60s. They started having problems as early as 1981. They had explosion. 1990s. Each year in 1990, there was some release, some killing, some some a kind of of disaster, pipes leaking, uh, people dying all the way up to 2007. So this was an accumulation of negligent acts that were taking place. So we got a case from a young lady who was at a gas station pumping gas and she started talking to her, or her dad started talking to uh, my partner's brother and saying, yeah, my, my daughter just got back from Fukushima and she now has a thyroid problem. She was over there doing uh, the uh, Fukushima meltdown. And he said, well, wow, you need to call my brother, Paul Garner. You need to have your daughter call. And Lindsay Cooper, our lead plaintiff, called Paul. Paul and I had tried cases together back in New York. We'd sued many of the oil companies, Chevron, Texaco, you name them. We, we had sued them before. And um, Paul called me and said, you know, we've got this weird case. And uh, this lady knows at least three or four other people who were injured and, and harmed. So we set up with 12 sailors. We filed a lawsuit December 2012. Uh, Paul called me and by the time I started going through the lawsuit to amend it, we had about 52 more sailors who had called in with thyroid pro problems, testicular cancers, uterine cancers, um, types of illnesses that 20-year-olds, 21-year-olds, 23-year-olds, up to 35-year-old young people do not normally get. Mm -hmm. For example, um, Lieutenant Steve Simmons, the year before he was sent over to Fukushima, he was hiking the hills 
Hawaii. Active backpack on, running up hills. He went to Fukushima. Within a year after he left Fukushima, he couldn't walk. And he's now sh literally shackled and, and tethered to a wheelchair. He's obtained a medical discharge. We now have 250 plus young sailors with all kinds of illnesses. We've had three to die. We had one of the sailors came home, impregnated his wife. They gave birth to a little baby born with brain cancer. Wow. Cancer down the spine, lived for two years and just died in March of this year. There were 70,000 Americans that responded. So we have filed a class action lawsuit with 250 named plaintiffs for a class of 70,000 first responders, U.S. servicemen and women, who were either on one of the ships in the Seventh Fleet, about 12 ships, or they were already in Japan that were called to duty to try to provide humanitarian aid. Who are you suing? We're suing our initial lawsuit was just against Tokyo Electric Power Company because it was very clear from all the investigation that this company had been negligent historically and clearly on the date of, the, of this particular meltdown. This meltdown did not, was not caused by the tsunami or the earthquake. It was caused according to the Japanese government independent investigation by TEPCO. It was a man-made disaster. That's their finding. There are earthquakes and tsunamis all the time around power plants, and they don't melt down. TEPCO had negligently managed this plant. But after we got involved in the investigation, we continued to look. And we looked at GE, because GE built these nuclear boiling water reactors, they're called. And you know, you have those kettles where you put the water in when you were a kid, and when it boils, the little top goes up. That's all this nuclear energy does. It just boils water. Einstein said using nuclear energy to boil water is just a hell of a way to, to go. It's stupid. <laughs> but GE, much like what Kleenex made the first Kleenex, and we call it Kleenex, well, uh, Xerox made the first machine. GE made these boiling water reactors. Mm -hmm. GE and another American company called Ibasco. Ibasco designed the plant. Then they brought in uh, Toshiba and Hitachi, two Japanese companies, to help because that's a part of the colonial scheme. You've got to share some of the trillions with the local to make everybody feel good. But indeed, this is a GE problem. When GE got ready to launch this, these boiling water reactors in Japan, around 1975, three engineers resigned. Mm -hmm. said, don't do it. They told the atomic energy, don't launch these particular boiling water reactors because they're not going to do what they're designed to do, and that is contain radiation. They are not designed to do it. If there's a disaster, they will not contain radiation. They have these uh, uh, safety valves around each of the reactors. It's something like eight around each reactor. Everyone failed. Each one of these safety relief valves failed, which would have prevented the meltdown. Now, Che is absolutely correct. This is not a Japanese problem or a Korean problem. This is an American problem, which now becomes a world problem. Mm -hmm. And it is indeed a segregation and an extension of colonialism. And the only way we're going to fix it is the same way we fix the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in Selma, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And so we know about discrimination. But the way the civil rights movement won, the reason why we, Dr. King had five significant victories, the interstate bus in, Burm in, Al in Montgomery, the interstate buses in, in Alabama, the Title VII you know now is the 1964 Civil Rights Act in Birmingham, 
the 1965 Voters Right Act in my hometown of Selma is because people like us organized. Mm -hmm. We must organize. You were talking about the ants. It's really, I like to analogize it to the hornets. Mm -hmm. Because there used to be a slaver who he would ride in his buggy and his slave would drive him around and he had a whip. He was very good with his whip. And every time he would see a butterfly, he would flick it out of the air. A fly, bam, he would knock it out of the air. Anything that flew around, bam, he would flick it out of the air with his whip. And then one day a hornet came by and he didn't bother the hornet. And the slave turned around and said, Master, why didn't you hit that hornet? He said, because they are organized. <laughs> and that's what we have to do. <laughs> we have to organize against nuclear energy on the planet. It is planetary suicide. Um, now, how can you help these cases? Go to our webpage, which is FukushimaRadiationVictims.com or dot org. That's the Sailors First lawsuit. Go there, look at the plaintiffs, look at these young sailors. These are the people now need more than ever this activation of this treaty, this concept of Tamadachi. Help our friends. These sailors need our help. We need Japan to help our friends. Tokyo Electric Power Company, GE, they're multi trillion dollar loss uh, 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 corporations. And they've been fighting us and fighting us and fighting us. Our first amendment lawsuit, they tried to get it, one, thrown out altogether, or two, moved to Japan. And we beat them. We filed a second amendment lawsuit. The initial argument was that the court cannot decide what a make a ruling about what President Obama does, what the executive branch of government does, because that's a separation of powers. It's, it's a legal word called justiciability. It's no subject matter jurisdiction. And so the court, Tokyo Electric Power Company, argued it needs to be thrown out. And we won. And we filed a second amendment complaint, and they want to throw that out, and we won. And now they, then we filed the third amendment complaint because we have more and more sick sailors. In the third amendment complaint, we brought in General Electric and we brought in Ibasco, two American corporations. We also brought in Toshiba and Hitachi. They are the people who designed and built and constructed these bombs. Mm -hmm. And that's what they are. They're nuclear bombs waiting to explode. Mm -hmm. The boiling water reactors that GE built in Japan, they put 23 of them around the United States. And you know what? Everyone is leaking. Everyone is leaking. I have another case against GE now for a 64-year-old man in, uh, where's it, Boise, Boise, Idaho. This man been working around repairing these boiling water reactors for GE all around America. He now has a degenerating brain. His brain, his frontal lobe is literally melting away. We just filed another lawsuit just uh, a couple of months ago for Mr. Lawson in that lawsuit against General Electric. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of what is going to come unless you organize. Mm -hmm. Now, they are trying to outspend us. TEPCO has now appealed our case to the Ninth Circuit because we've won three times against them. They're now going to the Ninth Circuit and ask the Ninth Circuit to please hear their appeal and throw our case out again. We have opposed that. Uh, the judge has ruled in our favor and said, no, I'm, the case is down in San Diego in federal courts. No, we can hear this case. We're not invading President Obama's uh, area of executive powers. We will win that as well. We will win this attempt uh, to appeal. They just now just requesting permission to appeal. And just yesterday we filed another opposition to one of their papers. They're just spending trillions and trillions of dollars with these big Fantasia law firms in LA. They have five law firms in Japan. They fly them all over. They all get together. And it's just three of us. It's my son, who is my law partner, 
and my buddy Paul. <laughs> and we'd go up to my house in Kula Lake and drink wine. And we got out of here. And we would meet him every Sunday. And now we're going to join with Che. <laughs> so, just in closing, this now is about us. We have to have these kinds of town hall meetings all across America. You need to please start having these kind of meetings. Invite these individuals to come and speak. I will be delighted to speak anywhere. The news needs to spread. This is the way the movement started in South Alabama. It just started with a couple of little kids who then met in churches and organized and brought in other kids and brought in other adults and brought in other teachers until, voila, there was the 1965 Voters' Rights Act. It ultimately ended up in marches. This is the way Jesus started, little groups of people. You don't need a lot of people to start a revolution. But we now need a revolution to save our planet. Thank you.